Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 12, 2021, around 2 p.m. Eastern Time. A lot to talk about today as we have Tropical Depression Fred, which can impact Florida over the next few days, and a look at Invest Area 95L, which is likely to become a tropical storm that could impact parts of the Lesser Antilles over the next five days. So let's kind of jump straight into everything. Taking a wild look across the Tropical Atlantic this afternoon. We do have a lot going on today. First of all, we'll look here at Tropical Depression Fred. Again, this uh, moved over the island of, Hi or of Hispaniola in the very tall mountains of the Dominican Republic over the last several days, or over yesterday, really. And it emerged this morning and has now lost a lot of its definition. And this will be continuing to move off towards the west-northwest here. And again, this could get imp uh, impacting and get close to portions of the Florida Keys in the western and southern Florida Peninsula, and then kind of take a turn much like this up towards the Florida Big Bend region. And then we are also watching Invest Area 95L now with a high chance of development as this continues to move westward and northwestward over the next few days, uh, moving in the same general direction of where Fred just kind of was for the last several days. So this is kind of one of the things, back-to-back -back systems, that could be impacting the same general vicinity. If we look here at the track forecast, this is for Tropical Depression Fred. Again, we can see where it's been the last several days. Became a tropical storm south of Puerto Rico and moved over the island of the Dominican Republic in the very tall mountains there of Hispaniola. Now weakened subsequently to a tropical depression. This is expected to regain tropical storm status over the next 36 hours. However, this is highly questionable. And uh, we'll take a look at that here in, in greater detail in a moment. This is, then is expected to continue moving through the Florida Keys where tropical storm conditions could be possible. And then uh, slowly intensifying as it moves off towards the northern uh, Gulf Coast there towards the Florida Big Bend region and the Florida Panhandle. And eventually inland near the Alabama-Georgia border uh, within the next five days or so. And then we're, again, we are also watching Invest Area 95L, uh, this now with a 70% chance of development as it moves off towards the west-northwest and eventually uh, over the same area that FRED is currently. So a lot of the same area that had to deal with impacts from FRED is unfortunately going to have to deal with impacts here from 95L, which I do believe is the system that we're going to have to watch just a tad bit more carefully as I think this one could be a bigger problem by the time it gets into the islands. So looking here at Fred, again, we'll talk about this first and work our way from west to east here. So looking here at Tropical Depression Fred, we notice that this is still a very uh, broadly rotating circulation, just barely closed. The recon plane from earlier found only about five to 10 knots of westerly wind here on the southern side. Uh, and roughly at about 20 knots of wind here to the north. Uh, again, a much uh, brisk trade uh, flow here coming around from the east and on the northern side of this. And again, we have very light westerly winds down here, suggesting that this is still barely a closed circulation, uh, but not by much. Again, we can kind of see the heart of this circulation uh, that is kind of sitting just now to the south here of Cuba. Again, it's going to be roughly paralleling the coastline uh, for the next several days, again, or for the next uh, couple of, of days here, really, for the next about day or two. And again, we'll have to watch to see if any of the land influences may be able to bring the circulation inland. Uh, any small deviation would bring this over land, and at that point, again, the development chances would go way down uh, for this to be able to regenerate. In fact, uh, this is probable that at this point, this could just be an open wave uh, but we'll, we'll have to kind of just see for continuity purposes. So this is mainly still being called a tropical depression. Uh, we do have a little bit more in the way of deep convective activity that has developed around the storm's uh, area of circulation today. However, most of the moisture envelope is still well off towards the east of where the center is, which is right here. Uh, so a lot of the moisture and deeper convection associated with this broadly rotating system is still well off to the east. Uh, but we do have a little bit more in the way of convection trying to funnel in today and certainly a lot of agitated cumulus on the eastern side of the circulation, which does indicate that we may have deep convection that tries to develop at any time. But one of the things that's going to be hindering it 
is if we look here at the water vapor imagery, we notice that we have a broad upper level low that is positioned across the Florida Peninsula right now. And this is kind of one of the things that has led towards a little bit of southwesterly vertical wind shear over top of Fred. And this is roughly at about 15 to 20 knots. So it's not especially high, you know, but it's getting on the upper end because anything really over about 20 knots uh, generally becomes where conditions become too hostile for additional development. So we're kind of right on the fringes of where development would be kind of plausible in this type of situation. Now, uh, with that being said, this broad upper level low is backing and weakening at the same time. It's backing northwest and, and subsequently weakening because it's been sitting over this area for the last several days. And upper level lows that sit over one area for several days, they tend to weaken with time. That's just the nature of how they go. But, but we can tell that this is still being sheared again. We can kind of see some of the anvils that are kind of stretching off and being blown in one uniform direction. And that is, again, indicative that we have a little bit of that uh, wind shear that's kind of kicking into the system right now. We also have some dry air that's being entrained into the circulation. Again, we can kind of tell that some of these lighter gray colors here uh, indicate a little bit of dry air that is kind of around this broad upper level low that's over the Florida Peninsula. Now, it's not exceptionally dry like we see here near the Greater Antilles and, and you know, over towards Puerto Rico and the U.S. British Virgin Islands. Uh, but this is subsequently dry enough that it's going to take a little bit of time for Fred to moisten its environment. Uh, but as we can kind of see in the visible satellite imagery, uh, what Ever we're going to have primarily here, the circulation is going to be mainly focusing on ocean flux response and kind of this rotating airflow to generate deep convection. And again, whether or not that actually happens is going to be determinant on whether the circulation is too weak or whether it's just got that extra kick in it to generate that convection. And so far, we're kind of seeing signs that it does have some of that extra energy to develop some of that convection. But again, we need sustained deep convection that's going to be able to lower the pressure centers and shallow convection like we're seeing around the eastern side isn't going to be able to do it. So we'll have to see how that happens. Now, if we go to the GFS forecast, this is the 850 millibar vorticity. So we're looking at the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. This is the 12Z run valid for 2 p.m. this afternoon. Here is our storm right now. This is Tropical Depression Fred. Again, we notice that, again, it's being generally steered around this ridge of high pressure, so it's kind of being steered, again, towards the west-northwest. Now, eventually, this uh, ridge is going to start backing towards the east-northeast here and allow the storm to gain a little bit more latitude by Saturday morning. And that's when, again, we're going to have uh, something interesting that happens here. We'll be watching for this very broad area. We got the southern part of the circulation here that actually ends up over Cuba and a northern part of this uh, wave envelope, because at this point this would be an open wave, the northern part of the wave envelope is near Miami and parts of the Bahamas at this point, and would be moving generally inland over parts of the Florida Peninsula. And what actually ends up happening is on the GFS, this northern part of the wave ends up kind of kicking around by Monday morning, and this is what becomes part of a storm that develops here in the northeastern Gulf of Mexico, and subsequently then just kind of sits around there for the next several days. Now, again, we can see how this works here on the 200 millibar wind pattern in the upper part of the atmosphere. Again, this is our upper level low that we've been monitoring over the last several days, still generating a lot, a lot of southwesterly vertical wind shear over top of uh, Fred currently. But we notice how this, uh, this kind of ends up kind of backing off and the upper level low actually becomes uh, censored kind of over the far northern Gulf of Mexico here. Now, as it does so, the air around Fred would become a little bit more difluent. We have a little bit more of difluent flow aloft. And again, if we kind of remember where the system is positioned in the low levels, this is near the Florida Straits at this time. So we look at the Florida Straits region, we notice that we have a little bit of diffluent flow aloft, and this may be able to generate just enough uh, for deep convection to develop closer to this low level uh, vortex or whatever is there at that time. Now the air still is not in the most favorable position. We can tell that again, this upper level uh, disturbance is backing out 
but this anticyclone here is actually displaced from where our system would be in here during this time. Now, uh, what's been occurring here on some of the models like the Euro is we actually have the anticyclone position directly over top of the storm. And on the European runs of the model here, we end up getting a storm that is a little bit more coherent uh, than on the GFS. We actually notice that it's backed a little bit generally towards the south and west here. And potentially this is, again, in part because we have a little bit stronger of an upper level anticyclone, upper level ridging aloft, which may be able to create also a little bit more diffluent flow and a little bit more of a favorable trough interaction. This is the 12Z run from the Euro. If we kind of switch back to the 0Z run here of the Euro during the same time, again, it had also a much stronger vortex here on Monday, where this would really be Sunday evening going into Monday uh, morning that we have a pretty coherent vortex moving ashore in the Florida Big Bend region at this time. The 12Z run of the Euro kind of agrees with that. Again, this northern part of the wave envelope moves over the Florida Peninsula. Now, this would generate a little bit potentially of conflicting problems because, again, uh, you wouldn't be able to get the additional strengthening if this were to just kind of move over this part right here and end up there, whether and again, whether or not this kind of ends up over the Florida Peninsula or whether this not this is able to stay over water for a longer period of time is going to matter significantly in terms of the overall intensity. So we're going to have to really watch this pretty carefully. Again, for right now, uh, the Hurricane Center is forecasting this to retain its original low-level vortex and strengthen this vortex as it moves through the Florida Straits and the Keys and eventually with ending up at a 60 mile per hour landfall point here somewhere uh, near the Florida Gulf Coast. So in the Northern Florida Panhandle. So it's going to be interesting to kind of watch here. And again, really anywhere in this cone, this could even uh, try to develop a little bit further north and kind of wobble northward and track uh, over the Florida Peninsula before crossing back over into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, if that does so, We'd have a little bit more in terms of rain and wind impacts for portions of the Florida uh, Peninsula, maybe an isolated tornado threat as well. Uh, but again, it wouldn't have a lot of time to intensify then once this moves back over water. So we're just going to have to wait and see again. Right now, the forecast is pretty uncertain in terms of that regard. Now, if we turn our attention back out to uh, Invest Area 95L, we can tell that today we've had a little bit better of a coherent vortex structure. We can see... Uh, in the low levels. Now, we'll notice right off the bat that we are getting sheared convection. There's some pretty strong easterly shear aloft here uh, that is pushing all the convection downstream. And we had an earlier convective pulse uh, that was able to generate a pretty coherent vortex. And uh, again, we're seeing some of these pulsing cycles here. Uh, now, we're not really getting a very strong indication of deep convection that is well sustained. And this is also because we have a little bit of dry air and with this easterly shear uh, aloft, again, we're getting some of this dry air to be entrained into uh, the storm's uh, environment right now. And this is kind of helping to pump in a little bit of that dry air aloft, work its way down to the surface and not be able to establish a sufficient deep convection over a long period of time. However, this will likely change. Now, if we look at an ASCAP pass from earlier this morning, this was a 12Z uh, ASCAP pass. And what we'll notice is that, again, the wind flow, we'll kind of zoom in here, and I highlighted it better, but the overall wind flow, uh, we can kind of tell is one that is just enough that we probably have some type of elongated surface uh, trough or even a circulation in here. We can kind of tell that this is still a pretty sharp wave envelope, and this may not necessarily be uh, a closed circulation, but this is getting very close. We may even start to see some of the start to tighten up in a circulation form in this region. And we can kind of see on the visible satellite that we do in fact have that circulation that seems to be trying to develop uh, on the western side of the, or on the eastern side of this circulation here. So, or on the eastern side of the convection. And if this convection is able to persist and maintain itself, we could be looking at a tropical depression by as early as tomorrow night if this kind of were to maintain itself uh, over the next several hours and, and days. Now, uh, we can turn to the GFS forecast and look at what might be happening, but the GFS forecast is not all that well established. We can tell that from 3 p.m. this afternoon, it had little in the way of convective activity out here 
with 95L. And that's one of the main reasons why that this is not developing it because the convective activity is a lot less and it's really not handling the performance of 95L well. But we can look towards the upper level environment, maybe for some clues as towards what might happen with the system near the lesser Antilles within the next few days. Uh, we can already tell that, again, we're dealing with some pretty strong easterly shear, probably about 15 knots or so of shear, which, again, is shearing this, this you know, convection in the cloud mass off towards the western side of that circulation. And what we'll notice, though, is, again, as this continues to move forward, we get some of that. Uh, we get an, an actual kind of pinching off here in an upper level anticyclone that ends up developing as the storm approaches the Lesser Antilles. Now, a lot depends here on what happens with FRED because a stronger vortex here with FRED, uh, like the European was suggesting on the overnight runs, would create a downstream effect of a stronger uh, cyclone, anticyclone here, stronger ridging aloft. And this would create a stronger sheared environment as the storm approaches the Lesser Antilles, which would mean that subsequently the storm is a lot weaker. And we can maybe see some of the uh, some of the hints as towards maybe why that's happening. Again, the, the euro here doesn't really develop a coherent vortex structure, and I'm not really sure why, to be honest. The environment here uh, with a little bit of a weaker storm would be at least semi-favorable, so we'll have to see why that's not the case or why it may not be developing. But given the fact that, again, we have a pretty coherent vortex structure now, and we at least have some convective activity, it leads me to believe that we will likely see development more than not. The GFS forecast, though, again, continues this upper-level anticyclone. Eventually, though, it kind of butts uh, into uh, this upper-level uh, ridging that's going to be setting up a loft over Florida uh, within the next five days or so after Fred is long gone. And uh, this will create, again, just a large amount of shear for any storm that would be moving into this environment. Uh, but if we have a storm that maybe, in, in fact, rides a little bit more towards the south, we may get a better environment. Again, it's all going to depend on how exactly the interaction with threat occurs and also what initially happens because a stronger storm, again, is going to be able to generate its own outflow and is going to be able to, to better fend off the shear that is awaiting the storm further towards the west. So that's going to be something to watch here. The relative humidity, again, we can see in the middle part of the atmosphere, this wave is dealing with a little bit of dry air right now. Uh, this is kind of the wave envelope as we speak. Again, not really coherent in the model because the model is underdoing the convective activity. Uh, and that's also why it's underdoing development chances out here, in my opinion. But we notice that there will be some dry air, there will be some shear. So this will have impediments, especially as it approaches the islands. But if this can get going before the islands and it can be sufficiently strong before the islands, it may have a better chance at surviving. Uh, but this is likely going to end up in much of the same location as Fred did and track over much of the same general vicinity, including uh, something that could happen where this tracks generally, again, over the island here of Hispaniola. So we'll have to watch that very carefully. All right. So that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.